receive him, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the One God, to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. Allah, the creator of all things, Allah, the sender of all prophets, Allah, the revealer of all truth. To him, I submit and seek refuge. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of God. If I lived to be a thousand, I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who came among us and searched among us for one who would carry the message to the black man. And that man is our beloved leader, teacher, and guide. The man who has made the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran relevant books for the oppressed black people of America and the oppressed peoples of the world, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear and wonderful brothers of New Orleans, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalam Alaikum, but it means in English, peace be unto you. To Minister Harold Muhammad and to all of the believers of the mosque here in New Orleans, mosque number 46. Minister Harold, we want to thank you and all of the believers for your hard work in getting our brothers out in this magnificent occasion. And I want to thank the reverend clergy and members of the political establishment, members of the press, but most importantly, we thank each and every one of you. This is a great night in New Orleans. Tonight, uh, Mayor Mark Morial is being inaugurated as your new mayor. Had we known that this was his inauguration day. Had I known it in time, we would have postponed our meeting because this properly is his day. He worked hard, he fought hard, and he won against odds. 
we wish him well in his <laughs> task. Of course, Mayor Marial cannot do it by himself. He needs help. And to talk to black men such as you is a great honor, even though the inauguration is going on at this very moment. There's another inauguration going on at this very moment. I would like to thank whoever it was who offered me or gave me the key to the city of New Orleans. I really appreciate that. It's a great honor. Mr. Jasper. Mr. Jasper. And it was signed by the mayor himself, the outgoing mayor? Yes, sir. It's very nice. This is the key? Yes, sir. It's a small key. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good thanks to our small time. Yes, sir. Thank you. He said, Good things come in small packages. I, I appreciate this honor. I appreciate this honor. I have another key that I was also given. And that key didn't come from the mayor, but it came from God through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. A very important key. Well, the key that I have been given unlocks the minds and hearts of our people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And that's the greatest key of all. all right. Brothers, I am honored by your presence. I am honored to look into your faces, to look at my flesh and my blood. We are a species that is at risk at this very moment that we speak, black men all over America are in danger. We are in danger because we have, in a sense, become useless to the society. And whenever this society does not have use for us, and we become a problem, then the kind of minds that rule make moves to get rid of what has become useful and problematic to them. You are great young men, but you don't know your greatness. You are being manipulated into a mode of self-destructive behavior that allows the enemy to justify to the outside world his evil plans against our lives. I am here tonight. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. I am here tonight, brothers, because I love you, I love you too, and I know that if somebody doesn't talk to us and make us understand what is happening, we could go down the tubes. This is so serious, brothers. You didn't just respond to my call, but the call of God is what you responded to, to be here tonight. There's so many things that you could have done with your time. 
but you chose to spend a part of your evening with us and I promise you none of your time will have been in vain there is a scripture in the Bible brothers that has a direct bearing on us sometimes reverend when you preach the Bible you preach it like it's something that happened a long time ago or like it's something that's going to happen long time in the future so that the books Bible and Quran don't have relevance to our everyday struggle to survive that's the wrong way to preach the book the book is talking both the Bible and Quran are talking about things yesterday to give us a picture of today the Bible is as real as you are and the Quran is as real as you are and when you understand the book and you open it the characters just come right out of the book and start walking and talking brother this is not about yesterday and I'll prove it to you from Genesis to Revelation in the Bible and from Al Fatiha to Al Nas in the Quran all of it is to give you insight into what is going on right now what is happening in Washington what is happening in the capitals of the world what is happening behind the scenes what are the plots and the plans against your very life it's all written in the book so tonight man we're not gonna waste time with frivolous talk let's get right on down to the nitty-gritty and open up the book and see where we are now brothers Pharaoh a wicked king in a nation called Egypt or Misra had under his rule some people that didn't belong to Egypt but were slaves in Egypt. God wanted them for his own purpose. Think of what the book says. God didn't send anybody to them. He said, I heard their moaning and their groaning under the whip and the lash of their taskmasters and I decided that I would go down and see whether the cry was all together what I had heard this is God talking he loved this people so much he wasn't gonna send somebody he comes himself now when he comes he appears to Moses in a burning bush. Yes, sir. Moses saw a light, the Quran says, and he went to see what the light was. And a voice spoke to him, Bible, take off your shoes, Moses. The land where you stand is holy. What you want me to do? Moses says to Jehovah, he said, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him that I said, let, not his people, let whose people? people. Whose people? people? Who's talking? God, let my people go. Now they were in bad shape. How 
do you know that God's people were in bad shape? They were polytheistic. So God had to send the law to them not to bow down to strange images and idols and statues. God had to tell them, thou shalt not steal. Well, evidently somebody was stealing. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Little crime was going on. God had to tell them, thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor because in some of these programs, when they pull you in, they'll make you lie on your brother so that your brother will get more time and you'll get less time. But somebody had to tell the children of Israel, thou shalt not punk out. Yeah. Thou shalt not that's, that's a modern translation, brother. <laughs> Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Check this out. You should honor your mother and, and your father. Many of us don't know where our fathers are. And we've grown to the point now where we are oftentimes disrespectful of our mothers. So God had to send down a law to his people because they were in bad shape. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know he's talking to his people. <laughs> then he says, thou shalt not kill because his people had become cold killers unjustly slaughtering self. So God took all of that into consideration, but still, no matter how bad they were in the eyes of Pharaoh, Go ahead. God said they're mine, That's right. yeah. and I'm going to straighten them out. So he came and told Moses, yes, go tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. When he said that, he was prepared now to go to war with Pharaoh. It ain't just talk now. Somebody is prepared to go to war over his people. You're not going to hold them. You're going to let them go. Why are you going to let them go? Because you don't have no more use for them and you're planning to kill them. And if you think you're going to kill my people, I'll kill all of you. God talking. Now I want you to hear me. Because I'm not talking about no Pharaoh yesterday. I'm talking to the government of the United States of America today. What was their plan, brothers? They saw, according to the Bible and Quran, they saw the children of Israel multiplying. Are you multiplying? Brothers, even if you didn't have a gun, you ain't shooting blanks. <laughs> the black man shoot straight. What's happening, brothers? The demographers, the students of population growth, say that white people are experiencing zero population growth. 
meaning that for every white person that is born, one dies. But black folk and Hispanics are multiplying at a rate that by the year 2056, they feel that black people in America will be either equal to or greater than whites in population. So that means in less than 100 years, America will be turning and is now turning brown. Soon going fading to black. Now that's a problem, brothers. Because if there is any unity between the black and the red and the brown, see, run, Jesse, run won't be no slogan. It may not be Jesse, but whoever you put up. This, brothers, terrifies some white folk. Think about that. In less than a hundred years, you will be the majority population in America. Think about that. Think about birth control pills and who it's aimed at. It's aimed at black and brown and red. They're using fertility drugs on white women so that they could produce more. And you know what this means, brothers? America is getting grayer because white folk are not producing enough babies, so you got an older and older population that's now talking about gray power, while in black America, there's a greater number of young people. Young people who are working age and fighting age, but if there's peace in the world and there's no more need for you in the army and America is transporting jobs out of America into the third world and you are not educated properly or qualified to work in a technical service-oriented economy and there's no money being allocated to retrain you to fit into a new economic reality, then you are useless and troublesome because they have no jobs for you. They're cutting back the army. So now what are we going to do with our Negroes? They got the pill to the older sisters, so they're cool. They're not having the babies. But the hormones that they put in the beef, in the pig, in the chickens, when you eat the meat, you notice your girls at eight and nine they got breasts bigger than their mothers. You that got daughters, you understand what I'm saying? They're nine years old and having menses. So they are ready to produce physically, but spiritually and mentally, intellectually, they're not really prepared for children. Huh? But there's a sex drive in you, in me, in them. Daddy gone. Mama got to work. Little girl at home. Meets young brother or old man. She's pregnant at 10, 11, and 12. 
13 and 14 because the pill hadn't reached her, but the babies are being born. And it's frightening Pharaoh. Teenage pregnancy. Teenage crime. The young brothers in here tonight, this is a new generation. This is the strongest generation we have ever produced. You know why? They're fearless. They're warriors. And they're cold. Go to any jail today. And you see the jails filled, not with old men, but with young men. Young men who are being herded into criminal activity. And you don't even realize you're being manipulated, maneuvered for somebody else's game plan. I hope to expose it all tonight. Brothers, look. You are the young warriors, fearless, and you're cold. There ain't no love in you for father, mother, sister, brother. In fact, most of our young people, 